From Television City in Hollywood, the Jack Benny program with a special guest, the coaches of UCLA and Michigan State, Red Sanders and Duffy Doherty. Presented by Lucky Strike. Light up a lucky, it's light up time. Be happy, go lucky, it's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Relax, it's light up time. There's a time and place for everything. And the right time for a lucky is any time you want to enjoy a great cigarette. And the right place for a Lucky is wherever you happen to be at the time. You'll always enjoy Lucky's because Lucky's taste better. Lucky Strike is made of fine, naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste better. Cleaner, fresher, smoother. And that's why Lucky's taste better every time. So make your next pack of cigarettes Lucky Strike. You'll find it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. Thank you very, very much, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Lucky Strike program. Well, here it is, New Year's Day, and I, I hope you all had a wonderful time last night. Incidentally, those of you who are seeing this show in color, I would suggest that you take another cold shower because we're only on in black and white. <laughs> I do want to thank everybody for sending me so many kind, nice messages, wishing me good luck for the new year. And just as I walked on, they handed me a batch of telegrams from fans that I, I would like to read to you, if I, if I may. Oh. Uh, here's one wire. It says, Dear Mr. Benny, Best of luck for the coming year and hope you have continued success with your show. If on any of your future programs you can use a bright new comedy team, we are available. Yours, Bulganin and Khrushchev. <laughs> they, uh, they just finished two hot weeks at Lowe's, Pakistan. <laughs> oh, here, here's a wire from Fred Allen. It says, Dear Jack, Today the world starts a new year. When are you going to? <laughs> of course, I, I, I would expect a wire like that from Fred Allen. He's a little bit angry on account of the Christmas present I sent him. And it wasn't my fault. You see, it took the parcel post so long that uh, by the time my present got to New York, the bread was stale. <laughs> I don't mean to imply that Fred isn't working, because he is. He's on every week on What's My Line. And, you know, he's trying so hard to look good. So he, I understand recently he wanted to have his face lifted, but he, I guess he thought it would take too long on account of the gravel strike. <laughs> oh, here's a telegram. It says, Dear Jack, best wishes to a wonderful guy and a great talent. I hope in the coming year you will find time to star in three or four pictures for us. Signed, Jack Warner, President, Warner Brothers Studio. Hmm. After all these years, he wants me back. Well, just to have come, he'll have to come crawling to me, you know. <laughs> well, here's, well, here's another wire from Jack Warner. It says, uh... Please disregard my first message. My brothers made me take a cold shower. <laughs> so much, uh, so much for the uh, telegrams. And you know, ladies and gentlemen, I'm really glad that New Year's doesn't come oftener than once a year, although I did have a great time last night. And you know, I know a lot of you people have an impression about Hollywood parties that maybe they're sort of rough and they're carousing and they're wild, but that isn't true at all. Because I know, now I went to a, a party last night in Hollywood and it was the most quiet, orderly party you've ever seen. 
And, uh, of course, it wasn't a tremendous party. You know, there were only six of us there, but there was a typical, it was a typical Hollywood crowd. You see, now there was uh, Sir Cedric Hardwick <laughs> and Ethel Barrymore, <laughs> Lillian Gish, <laughs> Edmund Gwen, Victor Moore, and myself. <laughs> And I assure you, there were no wild shenanigans. Because <laughs> all we did all evening was just sit there and look at, looking at the television set. And then just before midnight, the butler came in and turned it on. <laughs> the click was deafening. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, anyway... Don't believe all these things you hear about Hollywood, you see. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, tomorrow in Pasadena at the Rose Bowl game... What? Telegram for you, Mr. Benny. Telegram. Well, I mean, you could have waited out there. I mean, you could have given me the telegram off uh, stage. No, I couldn't, Mr. Benny. This is a singing telegram. Oh. Oh, a singing telegram. Yes, sir. Oh. Well, okay. Go ahead. <laughs> Who sent this telegram? Oh, I did. I did. <laughs> if anybody likes my voice, my agent's number is Crestview, 52414. <laughs> what a sneaky way to get an audition. <laughs> Ho, 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 singer. Uh, you know, uh, ladies and gentlemen, as I started to say, tomorrow in Pasadena, Michigan State plays UCLA at the Rose Bowl. And this will be for probably 100,000 spectators of the game, probably 40 million watching it on television. And I'm a sort of a football fan. I know many of you are in the audience and those watching. And so we have as our guests these two wonderful coaches, of these teams. Not only that, but they're our very dear personal friends of mine. Mr. Red Sanders of UCLA, Mr. Duffy Doherty of Michigan State. Well, fellas, it's, uh, it's certainly nice to see you again. Well, thanks, Jack. Thank you very much, Jack. Now, uh, tell me, Red... Uh, he's Red, I'm Duffy. <laughs> oh! <laughs> Why, I, I didn't recognize you without your helmets. <laughs> anyway, I'm certainly glad that you could make it, you see. We are too, Jack. I'm just sorry that we couldn't let you know until the last minute. Oh, well, I can understand that. You've got a big game tomorrow, you see, and you couldn't commit yourself to be on my show. Oh, it had nothing to do with the game, Jack. You didn't? No, we were waiting for a better offer from Ed Sullivan. <laughs> and he, uh, he didn't make the offer, huh? No, he didn't, Jack, and I'm certain if he had, it would have been a better one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> well, tell me, gentlemen, about your teams tomorrow, do you feel that they're, they're ready, ready for this big game tomorrow? Hmm? Well, I'll say this, Jack, that we've worked awfully hard for this one, and the boys are up, and I think that our overall team spe speed will pose a problem for Red. Well, uh, now, Red, uh, what do you think will be uh, Duffy's biggest problem at the Rose Bowl? Finding a parking space. <laughs> Don't let him kid you. Uh, Red's teams are always tough, and this year he has a great one. 
Yes, yes, he certainly has. Uh, uh, oh, uh, Red, uh, let me ask something. You played uh, Michigan State two years ago, didn't you, at the Rose Bowl? That's right, Jack, and they beat the Bruins 28 to 20. They did, huh? Well, now, without giving out any secrets, I mean, how do you intend to stop them this time? Well, defensively, Jack, we plan to use uh, an 8-3 defense, a 7-2-2, a 6-2-2-1, a 5-4-2, a 4-5-2, with slants and with overshifts and undershifts, more or less. That is. <laughs> well, that ought to stop. <laughs> certainly stop me. <laughs> oh, that was very simple, Jack. Do you mean that you didn't understand what Red was talking about? No, you see, football today is so complicated. Now, my day, when I used to play football, why, it was much different, much easier, you see. You played football? <laughs> yes, I used to play quarterback with the Waukegan Wildcats. <laughs> and uh, we had a wonderful halfback on that team, that great Indian player, um, oh, what was his name? Uh, Jim Thorpe. No, no. Uh, oh, Hiawatha. <laughs> we used to play on the shores of Gitche Goom. <laughs> now, gentlemen, I know you want to get back to your team, but I would like to ask you one question. I, uh, oh, I don't, I don't imagine you'd like to answer this one, though. I... Answer what, Jack? Well... I wanted to ask you about predictions, making predictions about the game tomorrow, and I guess you feel rather shy about answering that one. Oh, no, on the contrary. Red and I have talked it over, and we feel it's childish to be afraid to make predictions. Oh. That's right, Jack. Uh, we're ready to go out on the limb with this one. Well, I'm very glad to hear that. Then what are your predictions for tomorrow's game? Huh? Well, we predict that if Michigan State doesn't win, then UCLA will. <laughs> I see. Uh, unless, unless it, it turns out to be a tie. Oh. <laughs> well, you certainly stuck your neck out. <laughs> Thanks very, very much. Two wonderful fellas and great sports to come on here a day before this big game. Of course, I'm very, very anxious to see the Rose Bowl game tomorrow. And it, it, uh, it was almost impossible to get tickets, you see. Uh, they were practically sold out for months. So you can imagine the ticket scalping that went on. You know, imagine people having to pay, real fans having to pay $10, $20, $30, $40 a ticket just to see their home team win. Now, to those of you who are not familiar with this form of extortion, I'd like to tell you the way these scalpers work. You see, a few weeks before a game, uh, we get a block of tickets. <laughs> and then we call up... Uh, well, I, I really... I'm not allowed to tell you legally I sold the rights to Racket Squad. Yeah. <laughs> now, ladies and gentlemen... In keeping with this New Year's Day and in tribute to our two fine friends whom you've just seen, there'll be a medley of songs by the Sportsman Quartet. There's gonna be a football hero to get along with the beautiful girls. In spite of all a million dollars can do, a tackle or two will mean more to you. The fact that you are rich or handsome won't get you anything in curves. You gotta be a football hero to get along with the beautiful girls. By the old Pacific's rolling water, loyally we stand each sun and daughter. Hail the emblem of our alma mater, my Hebrew in Fight! Fight! 
It's toasted, you bet. A lucky strike is better tasting. It pleases everything in terms. You gotta always carry lucky to get along with the beautiful girls. You gotta LS and tease them. The favorite smoke of the beautiful girls. Ladies and gentlemen, as many of you probably know, I was in radio for 24 years. And the last 12 of those years, every year at this time, every season, I always did a New Year's fantasy called The New Tenant. And we've never done it on television. And today, this being New Year's Day, we'd like to show you the way we did it in radio. Now, those of you who have heard us do it on radio, you may get a kick out of watching it. For those of you who have never seen a radio setup, here it is. <laughs> now, Don Wilson, my announcer, who has been with me 22 of these 24 years, will play the part of Uncle Sam. Lois Corbett, who is Mrs. Don Wilson in real life, will play the part of his wife, Columbia. This is Mel Blank, who has played so many characters on my show that always done everything. My, the Maxwell, the noise of the Maxwell, and my violin teacher, and the parrot. That's right, Daddy. <laughs> and here's a young fella that's going to participate in the play. This is, uh... Uh, little Charles um, Herbert, little Charles Herbert. Just take a little bow, Charlie. That's it. You. <laughs> and um, this gentleman here will. <laughs> Wait a minute, I. I don't remember you at rehearsal. Uh, what do you do on this show? Nothing. <laughs> what are you doing sitting up here on this stage? Couldn't get a seat in the audience. <laughs> I, I guess I gave away too many tickets. <laughs> what do you mean, gay? <laughs> Look, just sit there and be quiet. You can watch the show. No? <laughs> oh, and by the way, ladies and gentlemen, this is uh, Mr. Gene Twombly, who has been my sound man for many, many years. <clears throat> and now... <laughs> and now for our fantasy, as we did it on radio, the new tenant, or goodbye 55, hello 46. Hello 56. I'm going back like my age. I, I will play the part of the old year, 1955. Music, please. Our scene takes place in a rooming house run by Uncle Sam and Columbia. It's almost midnight. The old year is getting ready to leave. Oh, Columbia. Columbia. What is it, old timer? Can you help me with some of this packing? I gotta get out of here and make room for the new tenant. Well, I sure hate to see you go. You know, you've been a pretty good year. Well, thanks. Before I go, Columbia, I want to tell you that I'm mighty proud of you and Sam and your 48 kids. And I hope the, those new ones you've been expecting arrive real soon. Here are the additional stars to show on your flag. Oh, thank you. I take very good care of... Well, wait a minute, old timer. You handed me three stars. That's right. Hawaii, Alaska, and Disneyland. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Disneyland isn't a state. Yes, it is. It's a state of mind. Keeps you young. <laughs> now, let's see. What else do I have to take? Come in. Hello, Sam. I've been packing here. Hello, old timer. Well, I got that list of people you want to say goodbye to. Oh, I've already said goodbye to all of them. Well, how about the last one? John Foster Dulles. 
Oh, I said goodbye to him this morning, and between good and bye, he flew to Paris and back. <laughs> going someplace in an airplane. He's the busiest man that I've ever... There he goes again. I never saw a man that traveled so... Hey, wait a minute. What's the idea of walking out in the middle of my show? I just got a shower and sobered up. And I didn't like you in color, either. <laughs> oh, well. Now, let's see. Oh, yes, before I leave here, Sam, uh, here's something I want to give you. All that money? What's it for, old-timer? Well, next year, they're holding the Olympic Games down in Australia, and I want to use this money to send a good team down there. Well, it's sure a lot of dough. Yep. There's $100,000 in that bag and 64000 in this one. Now, for heaven's sake, take good care of it before some darn fool gives it away on television. <laughs> <laughs> Old timer, you better start closing up your bag. It's getting kind of late. Yep. Haven't much time left. Who's this character? I don't know. Who are you? Uh, I'm Mars. <laughs> Mars? The planet? I ain't the candy bar. <laughs> well, kind of nice of you to come down and say goodbye to me. Oh, I didn't come to say goodbye to you. You didn't? No, some scalper sold me a ticket to the Rose Bowl game. <laughs> What? Next week, I'm the technical advisor on Rocket Squad. <laughs> I know about that. Well, thanks for dropping in, Mark. Yeah, goodbye, old timer. Doggone, I meant to give him his saucers back, and I forgot all about it. <laughs> now, let's see, what else do I have to do? Hmm, there goes the first stroke of 12. I wonder what's keeping the new tenant. Hey, that must be him now. Come in. Hello. Hello, old-timer. Well, well, so you're the little new year. Come on in, son. Come in. Hey, you're a cute little rascal. Thank you. Now, Sonny, you got a big job on your hands, and you're, you're going to be on your own. I know you're going to be awfully busy, but... Try to take good care of Sam and Columbia and all the children. I sure will. Now, Sam has had disagreements with some of his neighbors across that little pond there, but everything seems to be shaping up better. You can kind of help things along. I'll do the best I can. I'm sure you will. Now, before I go, Sonny, I want to show you my picture album. Your picture album? Yeah, here. Here, I'll show you. See that fellow over there? You ought to take good care of him because he did Sam and all of his neighbors a real good favor during my time. He fixed it so that men, women, and little fellas like you have a better chance of going through life with, with one less hazard. What's his name? Jonas Salk. Now you take good care of him. Let's see, who else? Who is this man? In the white camel's hair coat. Him? <laughs> oh, you'll hear a lot about him. That's Liberace. <laughs> He's an entertainer on television. Gee, that's an awful small piano. Where? That ain't no piano. You're looking at his teeth. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's the last Liberace joke of the year. <laughs> Now, let's see, what have we got on this page? Say, what's that big building with all the flags on it? That? Oh, I'm glad you asked me about that. You know, that's more than a building, Sonny. That's the heart of the world. That's in New York. That's the other, on the other side of Sam's living room there. That's where a bunch of fellas get together and talk over a lot of things they used to shoot about. Sometimes they... Talking goes on and on and on, and you, you get to thinking 
They ain't doing much. See? But, Sonny, if you don't do anything else, keep them talking. <laughs> you understand? Yes, sir. Now, let's see. Say, who's that man with the nice smile on his face? The nice-looking man there with the smile? That's a fellow I want to tell you about. Now, his name is Dwight Eisenhower. After you're here a while, you can, you can call him Ike. He'll like that. I want to tell you something, Sonny. I didn't take as good care of him as I should have. When my back was turned, he, he got sick. Now, it was either my fault or Sam's or somebody's. I don't know. Maybe we had him working too hard, you know? Anyway, he's getting along fine now, and I, I want you to take real good care of him. Nice fellow. Oh, I'll watch out for him all right. Yes, yeah, sir. You do that. In all his life, he's been taking care of Sam from the time he was a young fella right straight on through to now. And Sonny, come here. Come here, I want to tell you something. You know, uh, he likes to play golf once in a while, see? So... Whenever he wants to play, you see that he has a nice day for it. <laughs> now, he plays a pretty good game. Oh, he ain't no Ben Holton or anything, but he gets a big kick out of tearing up Sam's front lawn. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just about time now. So, Sonny, remember all these things I told you. Now, there are a lot of other things you'll have to learn about just the same as I did. New ideas, new problems, a few headaches, but you'll work them out. Well, sir, I gotta be going. So long, Sonny. Bye, old timer. Goodbye, Columbia. So long, Sam. Goodbye, old timer. So long, everybody. Keep smiling. Be happy, go lucky. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up a lucky strike. Relax. It's light up time. Man, that's the right idea. Taking a break to light up a lucky. Why luckies? It's right here on the pack. LSMFT. Lucky strike means fine tobacco. Naturally good-tasting tobacco that's toasted to taste even better. Light up a Lucky right now. It's light up time. For the taste that you like, light up a Lucky Strike. Right now. Light up a Lucky. It's light up time. You'll say it's the best-tasting cigarette you ever smoked. The Jack Benny program has been brought to you by the American Tobacco Company... America's leading manufacturer of cigarettes. The Jack Benny program has been selected for viewing by our armed forces overseas.